All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Tyler Ballhorn. I'm the founder of Stock Scores. I've been a professional stock trader for about 30 years, 32 years. And I've also been teaching people my methods and how the market works for a little over 20 years. I've developed all kinds of tools. And today we're going to talk about my methods um, to not only avoid stock market crashes, but also how to find hot stocks, even in a down market. You know, the market's been moving lower over the past two months or so, and yet every day there's hot stocks that can be taken advantage of. And a lot of what I talk about today will be how to find those hot stocks and how to benefit from them. So on screen right now, you will see a little itinerary. I'm gonna show you eight things that will allow you to analyze any stock or market in 10 seconds. And that may seem hard to believe, but as we go through that process, you'll start to see how it uh, works and how it makes a lot of sense. I'll also show you how to spot upcoming market weakness so that you can avoid stock market crashes or downward trends in markets. But also, and this is very important, how to know when a weak market is going to recover. Uh, most people will ride out a lot of the weakness in a market so they won't know when to sell and then they get frustrated as the market goes lower and then they miss the bottom and the turn from the bottom up into the next upward trend and so it's really important to be able to see when the trend is turning and that's one of the things i'll show you so that you can stay out of the bad markets and then get back in when the markets are hot now there are stocks that do really well despite a down market you know, I can think of in the last week, 10 stocks that made really big gains despite the market weakness. And I'll show you how I find those. And uh, that'll be more towards the end of the video, how to find hot stocks, no matter what kind of market you have. And uh, it's really cool, uh, very simple concepts that will help you. Um, we'll talk about how to manage risk so that you can avoid big losses and how to know when to sell either at a loss or at a profit. We're going to touch on all of those things. Today's video and, and webinar is really an overview of my approach to the market. We're going to dive in deeper in future sessions uh, coming up on Wednesday and Thursday, which I'll talk about uh, later in this video as well. All right, so let's get right into it. So we're going to start with some stock analysis basics. Now you see here on screen eight terms that uh, I'll go through each one one at a time. But if you can understand these eight things, you can really analyze any stock, any stock market, any commodity market, cryptocurrency, doesn't matter, uh, real estate markets, anything. If you can understand these things, then you can read the chart of any stock or, or whatever instrument you're trading. Now, I want to be very clear. Um, when I say read a stock chart, I think a lot of people think, oh, it's a technical analysis approach. And in the sense that I look at stock charts, it is, but I don't use common technical analysis concepts. I don't use RSI, MACD, stochastics, all of these things. And not that there's anything wrong with those things, but I think that sometimes you can get lost in the, in the complexity of it. I prefer to take a very simple, logical approach to analyzing markets. And I'm going to not only show you how to analyze a chart, but I'm also going to explain what's going on behind what happens in the price and volume activity of a stock. Because those are the things that if you understand uh, what's driving the market action, now it starts to make a lot more sense why we look at a stock chart. Because looking at a stock chart is really looking at human behavior. What are people doing with their money? Not what people are saying in the financial media, but what they're actually doing with their money. And there are certain situations where there's a very high probability that the stock is going to go higher if you understand what people are doing with their money. And that's a big part of what I'll teach. All right. So we're going to go through these eight things and I'll just read them out quickly. Inflection points, optimism, pessimism, support and resistance, price volatility, abnormal activity and trends. So let's jump into a chart of a Canadian listed stock. This is Enerplus. It's an energy stock that's done quite well over the last couple of years. While the market was moving lower in 2022 and into 2023, this stock you can see did quite well. 
Now, I'm going to sort of come back to when you would buy and when you would sell this. But first, I want to just explain those six things that I started talking about. So I'm going to draw some lines on here. And uh, the first thing I want to sort of highlight is this concept of inflection points. So anywhere there's a little valley or a peak, we call that an inflection point. It's the point or the price level where price stopped going down and started going up stopped going down and started going up. So we can call those inflection points. So any little peak or valley on the chart is an inflection point. And we're gonna play a little game of connect the dots. So I'm gonna take you back to kindergarten when everyone learned that game of connect the dots, or maybe it was grade one when you were just learning how to count. Because once we have defined the inflection points, we can now start to understand the other concepts on that list. And the first thing we're going to talk about is support and resistance. Support is a floor price that is drawn at an inflection point low. So anywhere that I drew an inflection point low, a little bottom, we have support. It's the lowest price that people were willing to take for the stock at a certain amount of time. So this now starts to think about what's behind the chart. The chart is a representation of what people think the fundamentals of the company are worth. And so when we see a stock have hit these floor prices, that's really the market saying, we don't think the stock is worth less than that price at that time. So here around the fall of 2021, the market didn't think the stock was worth less than $6 a share. That was the low point. Now, resistance is the opposite. It's a ceiling price, and it's the upper limit of what investors think the fundamentals are worth, what the business is worth. You know, when you buy a stock, you're buying a business. The business job is to make money, and how much money it makes determines the value of the company. It's not really how much it made in the past, but really what the market expects it will make in the future. So when we talk about the fundamentals, the market's trying to predict what the companies will make in the future, and they attach a value to that. You know, if you had a business that made you $100,000 a year, you probably wouldn't sell it for $100,000 because it'd be better just to keep it, right? In one year, you'd make what you could sell it for. So companies tend to sell for some multiple of what they earn or what is expected to be earned in the future. And this, in, in financial terms, if you go to business school, they call this the present value of future earnings expectations. So what would you pay for a company that makes $100,000? Well, you might pay $300,000 if it has no growth and it's kind of a boring business. You might be willing to pay a million dollars if the company's really growing quickly because you know it makes $100,000 this year and then maybe next year it's going to make $150,000 and then $250,000 and so on and so on, you'll pay more for a company that has growth. And so that's really just the basics, you know, finance 101, what you learn in your first year of business school. All right, so when we look at the chart, we're looking at the market's assessment of what investors think the company is worth. And ceiling prices are what the market thinks is the maximum value of the company, and floor prices support is the minimum. So through 2020, the market thought, well, we don't think that Enterplus is worth less than $2, but also not more than $9. Well, that's quite a big variance, isn't it? There's a lot of movement there. And the reason there's a lot of movement is because there's a lot of uncertainty in figuring out what a company's worth. You know, we're making a guess. Now, the company will issue news about what it's cash flows are, and, and in the case of an energy company, what kind of projects they have going, what their production is, all those sorts of things. If you think about a software company like Microsoft, it's how many uh, editions of Windows are they selling? What is their cloud storage business? You know, there's all these different businesses. And when you see those um, people on Wall Street sitting in front of their computers, they're trying to figure out what companies are going to make. And they're making a guess. And there's a lot of different opinions about it. And so the guess is 
based on information, but it's really about new information that drives the volatility of the stock. And so we can see that this stock had quite a lot of volatility. It was going down through 2019 into 2020, and then it was going up, and it made some big moves. You know, $2 to $24 is no joke. That's a, a very nice move. Well, what changed? Well, oil prices went up a lot. And so that is the main reason that energy stocks will make movements in, in its stock price is because oil prices are changing. And we probably all know when we go get our cars filled up with gas that oil prices have gone up a lot. Gasoline prices have gone up a lot. So the, um, the support and resistance levels are floors and ceilings. And they're based on the inflection points. So just to recap what we've done so far, we start with the floors and the ceilings, and we can draw a line across them, and we've defined support and resistance. And at any one time, there are different areas of support and resistance. Now, this may seem really boring right now, but it's super important when we talk about risk management, not taking big losses, and also knowing when to buy. Because these two concepts are integral to knowing when to buy a stock and when to sell a stock. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is optimism and pessimism. And before I do that, I want to give you a little metaphor that's super important to understand for the stock market. If you were um, taking a canoe on a river, you have a choice. You can paddle with the current or you can paddle against the current. Now, we all know that paddling against the current is a lot more work and you're not gonna go as fast. Well, the same can be said for the stock market. It has a current. The market moves up, the market moves down, and you want to trade with the trend. You wanna trade with the psychology of the market. And we can do that by understanding whether the market is optimistic or pessimistic about a company. And it's very simple. If I start with my inflection points, so let's clear all this off and start drawing again. If I start with my inflection point lows and they're rising from left to right, then I have optimism. If the inflection point highs are falling from left to right, then I have pessimism. So in this case, the direction of the current is up. And in this case, the direction of the current is down. Now, it may seem really simple at this point, but a lot of people don't do this. You don't wanna fight the current. You don't wanna fight the trend of the market. And so we need to know whether the market is optimistic or pessimistic so that we can avoid, avoid going against the grain of the market. Now, earlier I said that information about a company's ability to make money in the future is what drives stock price. And it's important to understand though that it's not only the information, but the mood of the market. If uh, investors are in a good mood, they're gonna give much more credibility to the information as it comes out than they would if they're in a bad mood. And so I want you to think about this period for Enter Plus as a period when investors were in a bad mood about this stock. And here, they're in a good mood. And so we see it often, companies will announce good news or oil prices will be strong, but if the market's in a bad mood about that stock or about that market, then even good news won't make the stock go up. And this is why it's really important to always understand the mood of the market, because I've seen it so many times where people will talk about all the great things a company is doing. They'll talk about the management. They'll talk about how they've got these projects on the go. Maybe it's a gold mining company and they're drilling for gold and it's, it's a, a super promising project. And yet the stock doesn't go up. And the reason may just simply be that the market doesn't care at that moment. The market isn't interested in that story because it's in a bad mood around gold stocks. On the other hand, energy market's been pretty good the last year and a half, two years. And so companies, when they announce good news in a 
solid, strong energy market, the stock goes up because people are listening. They're listening to the story. And that's why we always want to ascertain whether the market is optimistic or pessimistic. It's very simple. Rising bottoms, optimism, falling tops, pessimism. All right. The next couple of concepts that we're going to talk about is price volatility and abnormal activity. So price volatility is how much price is changing over time. So you can see here, price is changing a lot over time, whereas here, it really isn't. So here we're in a sideways range, and here we're in an upward trend, and here we're in a downward trending market. So price is changing, but it's going down. So there is low volatility here, and there is high volatility here. And again, if we think about the market's job, which is to figure out what information is worth, then when we have a market that's in a sideways, low volatility trend, what it really means is that investors have come to some agreement about what the stock is worth. So the buyers and sellers, they argue in the market every day about what a company is worth. And when the stock's going sideways without a lot of volatility, it essentially means that they've come to some agreement about the value of the company. Whereas when there's a trend going up, well, that's when the buyers are much stronger. And the sellers and buyers don't agree because every day the buyers keep pushing it up and up and up. And so that's a higher volatility situation. And the same can be said when the market's in a downward trend. In that instance, the sellers are in control of the market. They're pushing prices lower and it's highly volatile to the downside. Now, the last thing that I wanna mention is abnormal activity. So you can see that there's a few days when there's these spikes of volume, where volume is higher than normal. And you can also see there's a few days when price changes more than normal. And you can see they tend to happen together. We had a few days in early 2021 when the stock made a strong price gain with strong volume. And there's also days in the downside when it made strong price losses with strong volume. So here's a couple of rules. Typically, just before a downward trending market stops going down, so you've got a market that's headed lower, right? Here we see it. And you'll get an emotional sharp sell-off on heavy volume, and that's usually the time when the stock bottoms. And we can say the same for markets, and, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And also, when you have a stock that makes a strong price gain with abnormal price action and abnormal volume, it's often starting an upward trend. Most market beating trends start with abnormal activity to the upside. So I'll say that again, most strong market beating trends start their trends with abnormal volume and abnormal price gain. And the best time for that is when the stock has had low volatility before the abnormal activity. So let me show you that exact thing on this chart. We've got low volatility and we've got resistance at this peak here. We've got abnormal activity with abnormal volume with optimism and that started this market beating upward trend. That is essentially how I invest and trade in the stock market. Now it's a little more to it than that. I'm giving you the broad overview today. And one of the things you have to be very careful of is while most upward trends start with abnormal activity, not all abnormal activity leads to market beating trends. So you have to make sure that it's abnormal, but also from the right pattern. And we'll show you uh, some more examples in a minute, but that's the basic idea. Now, there was a couple more concepts that we needed to, or one more concept, and that is trend. 
So when you have a stock that is moving up or down, you can say that it is in a trend. And if I take some of those inflection points and I draw a line roughly across the bottoms, I've defined a trend line. And if I do the same across the tops, I've defined a downward trend line. So here we're in pessimism, here we are in optimism, and here we break the trend and we make an abnormal price move with abnormal volume, and that's when the trend turned from down to up. And then to the upside, we broke the upward trend here, and that's when the stock stopped going up and it's been more or less going sideways ever since. All right, so that's the basics. Now let's take those same concepts which I've applied to a long-term weekly chart going back five years. So this is the kind of thing that an investor would look at. So let's say you're managing your retirement portfolio. This is the, the chart time frame you would use. But what if you want to be an active trader? What if you want a day trade or swing trade? Uh, day trading means that you're going to move in and out of the stock within a day. Swing trading, you're in and out of the stock within a couple of weeks, typically. So let's look at a swing trading chart. This is a stock that has done really well over the last week and a half. And the concepts are the same here. We've got inflection points. And there's some going on the upside here, all these little valleys and peaks and valleys. We've got low volatility. We've got abnormal activity. We've got abnormal activity breaking a downward trend and then starting an upward trend. The difference here is that this stock is a 15-day, 30-minute chart. So this bar right here, which we call a candle, is a 30-minute candle. So on the 28th of September is when it first started to behave abnormally. I don't know anything about this company. To this day, I have no idea what they do. It looks like they're a biotech company, but I don't know, and I really don't care. What I know is that the people who know the most about this company were buying it aggressively there because they knew something that most of us don't know. And this is another important lesson that I learned the hard way, and that is the stock market isn't fair. There's always some people that have better information than others, and those people with their better information will predict what the stock is going to do. And if you wait for the information to be in the Wall Street Journal or on CNBC or BNN or whatever news source you look at, you're going to miss out because the news is always late. It's much better to follow market activity and look for abnormal behavior. And I've built special tools to do this because it's actually not something that's easy to find unless you have a computer and some, some math to find it. But I find these things within one or two minutes of that starting. You can see behind me, I've got these screens. Uh, if you're watching this as a webinar, you can't see it on the video. Uh, you'll see that there's some screens behind me, and that's these screens that I use to monitor the market through the day. I've got a couple of computers, very powerful computers, looking at the entire stock market, looking for abnormality. My website, stockscores.com, looks for abnormality. It uses math, and it's that simple is just looking for abnormal behavior because we know that market beating trends start with abnormal behavior. And in this case, you can see the exact same concept, low volatility, abnormal activity, and up the stock went. And we'll talk more about how we might trade this stock in a little bit. But before I do that, I want to talk about what people tend to worry about, which is stock market crashes. A lot of people don't want to invest in the stock market because they remember the crash that happened with COVID. They remember the crash in 2000 when the tech bubble burst. And so they're afraid that if they're invested in the stock market, they could lose everything very quickly or, or lose a big portion of their investments very quickly. But the truth is crashes are quite predictable actually. You'll never get out at the high. We're always gonna wait for a little bit of weakness to tell us that it's time to sell. But we can avoid the big pain that comes with um, a sell-off simply by drawing some lines on a chart, just like I've done so far. So markets do not crash lower overnight. They usually take a little bit of time. The fastest crash I've ever seen was the COVID crash. Also, the best market 
aside from the tech bubble in 1999, the best market I've ever seen was the market that came after the COVID crash. So when there is impending weakness, there's clues. And the only concepts you need to understand are trend lines, which I just showed you, and a reversal pattern. We always want to trade with the trend. And we want to watch for trend reversals, which tend to be either a break of an upward trend from a falling top or a break of a downward trend from a rising bottom. So those are those inflection points. Always makes easier sense if I look at a picture. So this is a chart of the S&P 500 going back to uh, 2019. It's a weekly chart. And let's just do what we were doing before. Start with inflection points. So there's inflection point lows. Here's inflection point highs. We can draw a line across them that best fits. It's art, not a science. It doesn't have to be exact. So there's your upward trend line. There's another one over here. There's a downward trend line there. There's an upward trend line here. Okay. Oh, and there's a little very sharp downward trend line. This is the COVID crash. So very sharp downward trend line there. Sorry, my screen just made an adjustment that I didn't want, so I'll fix that. Just drawing these as quickly as I can. All right, so there's your trend lines. Remember I said that you could figure out when a stock market was gonna crash just by drawing straight lines with a ruler? Well, you can see it there. And obviously, when the trend line is broken, here or here, it's time to get out. And when the downward trend line is broken here or here, it's time to get back in. It's that simple. And it takes, I don't know, five minutes a week to figure that out. Uh, many of you are probably already subscribed to my YouTube channel, the Stock Scores YouTube channel. I do this for you every week. I go through the markets and I will give you a sense of whether the trend is bullish or bearish. And so it's free. Just subscribe to the Stock Scores YouTube channel turn on the notifications and you'll get my analysis of this every week, not only for the stock market, but for gold and oil and the US dollar and uh, interest rates, which of course have been rising quite rapidly, Bitcoin. So that's it. If you want to avoid crashes, just make sure you only trade with the trend. And if the trend line gets broken, and I prefer to use a weekly chart for the investor, but if I'm a shorter term focused trader, then I might use the daily chart. And you can see here again, there's little trend lines. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. All I'm doing is taking the inflection points and drawing a line across them. So do this again. There's the inflection points, or there's the line. There's the break of the trend, which happened in the middle of August. And since the middle of August, we've been moving lower. Very interesting, on Friday, as we do this lesson, we had an update that broke a very short-term downward trend, although we're still below this downward trend. So I do think it's likely that the market's going to bounce back um, a little bit next week. Saw some good things on Friday. We'll see if that follows through. All right, so start with inflection points. Draw a line across them. You've defined the trend line. Inflection points. Draw a line, and then ideally the trend reversal comes when the trend line is broken after the build of a rising bottom. Here you can see there's an upward trend line and you broke it from a falling top. That was early in January of 2022. That was the signal to sell stocks in general. Maybe not every stock, but most stocks look the same. And over the next year, the market generally went lower. Trade with the trend, that's what you're looking for. Okay. So now, we've talked about markets. We've talked about how to stay out of markets and stay in good markets. The question then becomes, how do you find hot stocks? Because even in a negative market, you can find these stocks that do really well. You know, the market hasn't been great for the last six or seven weeks. And yet almost every day there's stocks that make pretty big moves. And in the course of a week or two, it's not uncommon to see stocks making 100%, 200% moves, 
even though the market's going down. So I have a name for these stocks. They're called alpha stocks. Just like you have an alpha uh, male in a, in a pack of wolves that leads the pack, you have alpha stocks which can lead the market. They tend to not be correlated to the overall market and they have very simple characteristic that I think you probably already know, and that is they trade with abnormal volume and they make abnormal price gains. So when we see a stock that was boring and then it comes alive with abnormal activity, you have basically the signs that that stock has alpha. And so we want to find the stocks that surprise the market with strength. So here's some examples. This is a daily chart going back uh, about a year. Here you have a sideways trading pattern. My inflection points are rising, so I have optimism. My inflection point tops are here, so I have resistance. And I broke through resistance. I've got abnormal activity, and that started the stock trending up. So we have. Um, a line of resistance, a breakout from optimism, and then we had a downward trend line which was broken here. Hey, look, abnormal volume, and that started the next move up. All right, so that's how we use abnormal activity to find alpha stocks when they're starting their trend. And this is the chart that you might use if you are an investor or what we call a position trader. You're fairly active, um, but you're certainly not day trading or swing trading. And in this case, uh, you know, it would take you 10 minutes a day to go through the entire market to look for these things. Some people do it weekly, 10 minutes a week. This is the topic that I will dive deeper into on Thursday. Make sure you're registered for that webinar as well. On Thursday, I'll go into how I find these, what the tools I've created to find these. All right, so that would be an investor type setup. And it's coming back to those eight things that we talked about already. Optimism, we got rising bottoms resistance, abnormal activity, breaking through resistance from low volatility, and that started the trend. There you have a downward trend, break of the trend, breaking through resistance at the trend line, and up it goes. Now you may have an interest in swing trading or position trading, much shorter term. All right, well here's a stock from uh, uh, a while back that was very abnormal to start the day. You can see here it was all of a sudden trading much more volume than normal. Prior to this, it was boring, and then it comes alive with abnormal activity. It breaks through resistance from optimism. And then here, through resistance from optimism broke, breaks out. So we can see these same patterns repeating themselves over and over again. All right, well, that's all well and good, but we don't want to take big losses either. Uh, it's really important to understand that although abnormal activity tends to predict most strong stocks, it does not always work. No trading strategy always works. And so it's really, really important if you're going to last in the market to have a methodology to make sure you don't take big losses. And so you should always plan to lose on every trade. Every time I take a trade, I know where my exit door is. I know the point where I'm going to take the loss and I'm going to move on. So we're going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. But it just goes back to those concepts we've already learned, support and resistance. We know where support is. We can plan to lose if the stock falls down through support. Okay, we don't want to trade against the trend and we want to be careful about parabolic trends. You're probably wondering what that is because I haven't taught you that yet, but I will in just a moment. All right, so let's go back to our enter plus chart. And we can see here the breakout right here through resistance from optimism. So the first question you have to ask is where was the last inflection point? Well, it was right here. That's the point where it kind of made a little floor and then broke out. There's also an inflection point here, which is, I guess, a longer term area of support. So we know that this stock has support at $2 and it has support at just under $4. All 
and we're going to buy this on the breakout at six dollars so we're buying at six and we know support is at four if it were to go down through this floor at four dollars then we're going to take the loss and get out all right so that's a 50 percent move no 33 percent move to the downside it's quite a lot but if we know that in advance if we know that's where support is then we can plan our position size based on our tolerance for risk. So let's say you have a $100,000 retirement portfolio and you are willing to lose on any one trade 1% 1 of your portfolio, so $1,000. If you're willing to lose $1,000 and you wanna buy this stock at $6, you shouldn't be thinking, well, what can I afford to buy? You might say, well, I've got $20,000 in cash so I can buy 3,000 shares. No, don't do it that way. You wanna focus on what you can afford to lose. And so if you're willing to lose $1,000 on any single investment in the stock market, then knowing that we're buying at six and we're gonna to plan to lose at four, we have a risk per share of $2. We're willing to lose $1,000. We know the risk per share is $2. And so we're willing to buy 500 shares. 500 shares times $6 is only $3,000 worth of that stock. And the reason the position size is quite small is because the um, stock is quite volatile. You know, the difference from the entry price down to support is 33%. So it's, it's going to be a much smaller position than if it was a a, a much less volatile stock. So every stock that you buy will have the same amount of risk, but the position sizes in dollar terms can be very different. You know, you could buy $10,000 of Microsoft and have $1,000 of risk, or you could buy $3,000 of this stock and have $1,000 of risk. It's all really irrelevant to where support is on the chart you've got resistance here you're breaking out you're going to enter there and support is here so you're going to buy at a dollar 60 and you're going to plan to lose at a dollar 40. so your risk per share is 20 cents make sense so if you're willing to lose a hundred dollars then you would buy 500 shares if you're willing to lose $1,000, you'd buy 5,000 shares. All right, so you should always, always do this. For every trade you take, you should know what the risk, um, what your risk tolerance is, but also what your position size should be based on your risk tolerance. And if it falls down through that floor, you have to get out. It's really important to never take big losses. All right. Okay, we're almost done what we were gonna to do today. Just stick with me, you got a few more things to talk about. So how can I help you learn how to do this stuff? I've given you kind of a broad overview today. Um, there's a lot more to it than that. There's tools that I've created. Um, I have services where I tell people uh, what to watch and what stocks are good and what stocks are not good and, and all these different things. So the first thing everyone should do is make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube or to my YouTube channel on, at Stock Scores. And that's free, obviously. I'm doing more webinars this week. So if I just jump into that, you can see that we have uh, here on the screen on the upcoming events, just go to stockscores.com, go down the screen, and you can see the different webinars that we've got and uh, make sure you're registered for those. So if you have an interest in day trading, Wednesday is that session. If you have more interest in investing, Thursday is that session. I'm going to show you my tools. They're pretty sophisticated. So I'll, I'll walk you through the processes of how I find things. And then on Saturday next week, the Saturday, the October 14th, I'll show you how you can be a member of Stock Scores and how you can uh, learn my methods and that sort of thing. Okay. And I will go through all of the more in depth stuff that we uh, haven't really had a chance to talk about today because today was kind of an overview. Now, one other service I offer is something called Active Live, where you can watch my analysis screen in real time. This is really meant for day traders and swing traders, but if you want that, I'll talk more about that on Wednesday.
All right. So here are the dates and times of the upcoming webinars. I just showed you those, but I'll leave it up on screen. And so I want to thank you all for joining the video. If uh, you've enjoyed it, please click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Trade well.